plenty of us in the UK love the great outdoors, even in the cold of winter. In Essex, one group combines that love with the Christian faith. They're heading into the woods as part of a nationwide movement known as Forest Church. And this group is led by Rachel Summers. And so we've got a few different activities for us to do today. In Forest Church today, we're just taking the chance to come and be together outside, enjoy some time together, enjoy the beautiful muddy woodland and find God outside here. People are doing Forest Church all around the country in lots of very different ways. There are some people who are doing it much more formal ways than I am, some people much more liturgically than I am. I'm doing it with lots of activities. We've been looking ahead to Lent, which is just around the corner, and thinking about those 40 days that Jesus spent out in the wilderness and how he was travelling on that journey out in the desert, thinking about his mission. And so some of the activities we've been doing have been to do with journeying, watching the movement of the clouds and also bashing away at the leaves, the things that we're getting ready to put down on our journey. You were doing little things that, you know, sometimes a textbook can't give it to you and you've just literally become more a one with God. And seeing some of the early signs of spring yeah. and nature is really quite rejuvenating, good for the soul. I like gathering in church, but I also like worshipping outside because I think that's what Jesus coming here is all about, being part of the whole of creation. It really helps me and my family to notice things that we wouldn't be noticing otherwise. Sometimes it's the surprising things that you stumble across that show you this beauty from God. Making the pancakes. This amazing, beautiful noise from the bubbling fat as we're trying to season the pan. It's almost like a melodic tune. Rachel's group come out to this patch of urban forest several times a year to mark the main Christian seasons. It's always varied, it's always moving. It makes me be able to feel part of something that's bigger than myself and that pushes me towards seeing the person of Jesus who is here in a relationship with me now. One of the symbols that some Christians use during Lent is ash on Ash Wednesday. So at the end of our session today, we put out the fire together with water and we use the water to mix around with the ash and mark ourselves, a sign of the cross with that, just as a symbol that here we are as part of this creation and we're getting ready at this beginning of Lent to follow Jesus in this journey. We don't really go out to do this kind of very often, so it's quite nice for a change. I like the pancakes. I eat it there. What brings us all together is just this love of being outside, this sense of connection with creation. It's something that people are able to engage with, and I think that's really special.
Lincoln's majestic cathedral contains an abundance of images of the natural world, including mysterious figures known as green men, as explained by Christian author Simon Cross. Green men are little carvings, sometimes in stone, sometimes in wood, that are found in various places, churches and cathedrals primarily, all over Europe in fact. And as you can see, he's got leaves and tendrils growing out of his mouth and then growing up round his face. While green men aren't mentioned in the Bible, Simon believes they're linked to a medieval Christian story about Adam, the first man on the earth. Adam, when he was dying, asked his son to get him some fruit from the Garden of Eden. Um, his son brought him some seeds, but he was too late. Adam had already died, and so he, he planted the seeds in Adam's mouth. The seeds grew into a massive tree, and then a uh, long time later, the wood from that tree was used to form the cross that Jesus died on. I think what it reflects to me is the fact that God is present everywhere. God is present out there just as much as God is present within. So it reminds us that all ground is holy ground. It reminds us that God's presence suffuses everything. For thousands of years, trees have provided food, fuel and shelter. So it's not surprising that many people recognise their importance. But they do need looking after, as JB Gill has been finding out. Hello there, you must be Tymon. Yeah, good to meet you JB. Hello. I'm in the Midlands to meet Tymon Robbins and his team. They run a tree surgery business set up by a Christian charity, Betel UK. Tymon, what's it like? cutting down trees for a living? Uh, it can be exhilarating, it can be a little bit scary sometimes <laughs> yeah. as well, You've got to keep your wits about you. I can imagine, and this tree's dead isn't it? Yeah, it failed to come into leaf this year, it may be because when they built the wall it went through the root plate, Yeah. and it's got its big brother there, it's crowding the light out, it was covered in ivy as well, so it's got to go because it's not safe. So this is going to come down completely? Yeah, we're hoping maybe if we've got time today we'll get the stem down as well. For Tymon, who's recovered from addiction, this is more than just a job. It's a calling, 
and the culmination of a life-changing journey of faith. When I came to Patel, I'd been a heroin addict for 20 years. I mean, it started off when I was young. I started smoking, started taking so-called soft drugs, and it spiralled out of control, really. And by the time I was 21, I was hooked on heroin and crack cocaine. I tried so many different things to try and break free, all types of different rehab programmes and everything. When I came here, I was seven and a half stone. I was stinking. Uh, all my friends had died. I was in a lot of trouble. Um, I came here, I wasn't even sure if I was going to survive. I was very fearful. But when I came here, through the, the people in the house were, were amazing. The guys really looked after me. There was a lot of care, a lot of love. I, I experienced the life of Christ and the love of Christ through people who'd been through the same thing that I'd been through. And I think I had to come to a place of of real brokenness before things got better, really. It was when I accepted the gospel. Spoken to you. I got to a point where I wanted to allow Christ to take over. And I think when I look at my old life has gone now, and now I have a new life and a new purpose. I have a fantastic relationship with my family now. They sometimes ring me up for advice on problems, whereas before I was the big problem. Tymon is now leader of this residential community supporting others on their journey of restoration through the work of the tree surgery business. It's quite therapeutic working outdoors, isn't it? I, I think so, yeah. And I think being close to nature is nice. Being close to God's creation, I think, does something in you that's really cool. Well, I get to help people. I get to pass on not just the tree skills that I've learned myself, but I get to pass on the life skills and the new life that I found in Christ.